President, the Vice President of Switzerland. Mr. Vice President, well, welcome. Welcome, it's very thrilled to see you, dear President. Please. And a big honor for me and for my country. Well, we're honored to have you. Yes, well, Mr. Uh, President, hello. Nice to see you again. Wonderful to see you. Swiss Ambassador. Mr. President, it's good to see you again. Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you for your entertainment last night. <laughs> Please, come in. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. 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 Santa Barbara or was forecast to be very nice. They're coming down now. Coming to the right here. I'll be brave. You go ahead. Hello, how are you? Hello there. I'm Rebecca Darwin. I'm the yes. publisher of the New Yorker. I know and I nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yes. Well. <laughs> this is Gretchen Dow Simpson. Hello. Hello. Very nice to meet you. Very nice to see you. Thank you. Hello, President Reagan, Lisa Hahn, how are you? Just fine. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, Mr. President, T. Adams. Hello there. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Ms. Adams brought her camera, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hello. 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 How are you? Yes, just fine. Good. Good. I could Good. ask Nancy to come out with me and see the moon. Very <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. good. Thank you. George Booth, Mr. Hello. President. Good to see you. Same here. You know that I not only look at cartoons, I'm a comic strip reader. <laughs> <laughs> I never miss them. Did you want a, a group? Yes, yes sir. I well, say. shall we get in here someplace? Sure. All right. All right. All right. Why don't you just slide back so you're even across? Okay. Yeah, there you go. Against the back yeah, of the that's, that's great. Okay. Everyone looking right here, great. Thank you, sir. Well, you must be you. blind after all this every day. What? Blink, blink, blink. <laughs> flashes. You forget about 25 years in Hollywood. I know. That's, that's, that's more than somebody took a letter. Well, we'd like to present you with a gift if we could. This is uh, our latest cartoon album. Oh. And uh, you can see Mr. Adams has been at work here. <laughs> yes. And also Mr. Lorenz and Mr. Booth. And yes. Gretchen has signed it for you. So well. We're very pleased to give that to you. Well, I like thank you. bedtime reading. <laughs> <laughs> Could I show you a little gallery of mine that actually sure, was inspired yes. by my getting shot? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <I'll laughs> just, just hold right here. Just step in here. Oh. 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 Yeah. 
switch gears, so I'm not going to take any questions. You can't switch gears today, but you're, you're working on Mexico, I know. <laughs> not in this meeting. Mr. President, Mr. President Lynn Nofziger was uh, convicted on three out of four counts of illegal lobbying this morning. He's the second uh, former close advisor of yours in the last three months to be convicted. Uh, what's your response to that? That's a question, and I'm not going to take any. Lights, please. Well, how are you going to respond to those who say this darkens the ethical cloud over your administration? This letter says, a few days ago, I returned from Honduras, where I had taken a group of Bethany College journalism students to see the real impact of the Sandinista Revolution. What we witnessed in Nicaraguan refugee camp along the Honduras-Nicaraguan border, I believe, tells the story seldom told in media reports. Last summer, I visited the same refugee camp near the town of Banley, Honduras, about 90 miles east of Tegucigalpa. There I met and talked to the hundreds of Nicaraguans who had fled the Sandinista regime in Nicaragua. There were as many heart-rendering stories as there were people, but the tale told to me by one mother was typical. Her two teenage sons were drafted into the Sandinista army. After a brief training period, they were sent into combat and were sickened by the orders their officers gave them. 
They were forced to take part in raiding Indian villages, burning homes, and killing innocent villagers. Unable to take this, the two boys deserted and returned to their homes in Iowa. They were soon captured by the Nicaraguan authorities and were beaten, tortured, and even burned. Eventually, they were returned to duty. Again, they deserted. This time, they fled north and joined the Congress. To escape persecution, the mother fled north to the refugee camp where we found her and the rest of her family. While the supply of such stories is virtually unlimited, the real impact of the situation in Nicaragua is more apparent on the faces of the hundreds of children who live in the refugee camp. Mr. Reagan, President, they have nothing. On my first visit to the camp, I had a few packs of Del Monte Trail mix in my pack. When I tried to split what I had with the hundreds of hungry children, it soon became apparent that the sympathetic gesture was a mistake that nearly ended in a riot. Then and there, I vowed that if I ever returned, I would bring enough treats for every kid in that camp. When I returned to the campus where I teach, Bethany College in Bethany, West Virginia, I wrote about my experience in the refugee camp in an article in the campus newspaper. To my surprise, several students came to me asking if I would lead an expedition of students back to the camp during the Christmas break to bring treats to the refugee children I had written about. Well, to make a long story short, I agreed, and the students succeeded in delivering candy, food, and toys to some 1,000 children living in the camp. It was probably the greatest experience of my life as a journalist or now as a college professor. It really renewed my faith in the American student to see how this handful of kids gave up their Christmas vacations paying their own expenses to help the victims of a less humane ideology. Neither I nor my students are kidding ourselves that we solved any of these children's real problems, hunger, <coughs> conditions, or being forced from their homes by terrorism and tyranny. Our objective was simple and limited, to bring a moment of brightness and possibly hope into otherwise dismal lives. And maybe even more important, to let the next generation of adults in Nicaragua know that some ordinary Americans really do care about them. It's possible that one of those kids just might one day end up being a legislator or even president of a democratic Nicaragua, a friend thanks to a handful of caring students from a small college in West Virginia. Already plans are afoot for more goodwill expeditions during the spring break and summer vacation. Any support, encouragement, not money, from the White House would be appreciated. The students' names are, and then he named them, the six, two girls and four fellows. They range from seniors and juniors to one sophomore. Thanks in advance for your consideration. I just think that is a different picture than the media generally gives us of who's right and who's wrong, or who's good and who's bad in Nicaragua. I just thought you might feel a little buoyed up as I was by reading about these kids. So I've already answered. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I now better switch to business. As you all know, I'll be sending the budget up to Congress next week, but before I leave town, I wanted to go over it with you. Now, as you know, this budget carries out the bipartisan budget agreement that we reached last November. It also meets the Grand Rudman Hollings deficit target of $136 billion for fiscal year 1989. Progress won't be as fast as I had hoped earlier, but this budget does keep us on a downward glide path for a balanced budget around 1993. And uh, hours before Jim gets into the budget, I know you've got a couple of comments on our budget and on the National Economic Commission created by Congress. Mr. President, thank you very much. I won't take long.